As we celebrate Independence Day, we should ask why the American Revolution succeeded in establishing a lasting republic, while so many other such movements sank into terror and dictatorships. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. This Sunday, we mark America's 245th birthday. Seven years after 1776, we established our independence when a peace treaty was signed with Britain, ending the war and recognizing us as a new nation. Four years later, the Constitution was established that endures to this day the longest-lasting written Constitution in human history. Our success inspired the French Revolution against its absolute monarchy, and also independence movements all over Latin America against Spain's rule, in the case of Brazil, against Portugal's. Yet while democracy expanded, often very painfully in the U.S. to include more and more people over time, it faltered just about everywhere else. The French Revolution fell in the Great Terror that saw thousands of executions and ultimately the dictatorship of Napoleon. Only in the 1870s did democracy firmly establish itself there, and not until the end of World War II in 1945 did women finally win the right to vote. Almost all the new Latin American nations saw brief periods of democracy, followed by dictatorships. Mexico, for example, didn't enjoy a true multi-party democracy until the early 2000s. The murderous aftermath of the Russian and Chinese revolutions in the 20th centuries left tens of millions of dead in their wakes. What made our history so different? In the 1790s, our ambassador to France was asked if he thought the revolution underway there would succeed. He was deeply pessimistic, and the reason, he said, was that unlike the U.S., France did not have experience in local self-government. By contrast, we had a long tradition of self-government in the 13 colonies. Each colony had an assembly of local inhabitants that exercised real power vis-a-vis the British-appointed government. True, suffrage was severely restricted, but by the standards of that era, it was light years ahead of just about anywhere else in the world. Moreover, unlike other imperial powers, Britain often left its North American colonies to their own devices, in contrast to the rigid controls exercised by France in North America. Only when Britain, in the aftermath of its successful war against France, began to infringe on what American colonists considered their basic rights, especially London imposing taxes on them without their consent, were the seeds planted that culminated in the Declaration of Independence with its ringing words of our unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We still have more progress to make in achieving a more perfect union promised in our Constitution. And this weekend, we should rededicate ourselves to ensure that this journey continues. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. (music) 